Hi, I'm just going to show you a few features of the Hamilton UI by using the Hamilton UI example in the uh, Hamilton repo. This is a machine learning example using the Iris data set. Uh, so it is uh, a little bit trivial, uh, but you should hopefully get the point. Uh, under components, you'll see there's a bunch of you know, Hamilton code, and this is what uh, constitutes our DAG. Uh, in terms of uh, assumptions, we assume you have the Hamilton UI already set up and you've logged in and given an email. Uh, and so the one thing you need to do then is create a new project. So this is a uh, Iris uh, example project. Can't smell. Uh, a demo for the masses. Um, and so that's all I need to do. Uh, now I'm going to have um, uh, a new project in here. And if I had an existing Hamilton project, I, I can just go ahead and kind of paste. Uh, but with the Hamilton UI example, um, if we go back to the readme, uh, all we need to do is um, you know, make sure that we are in the right directory, uh, we have the right uh, requirements installed, and then uh, we just can run the example. Uh, and so that's what I uh, kind of have here. Um, so I'm going to input now uh, the email that I put in uh, in the UI and so you can see here to double check what you have it will kind of display here in this username uh, and then uh, the project ID was fine so I'm gonna go ahead and run that uh, we should see uh, kind of things execute um, uh, we have the print logger on here uh, that's, that's why this is showing but then uh, we see here that a nice uh, URL has been printed and we can go see our execution so one of the things you'll notice is that uh, uh, we have profiling of uh, of the code uh, that shows you basically how long uh, things took. This is a pretty toy example, so everything took, it was pretty fast. Uh, we can see the entire uh, graph or the DAG that was executed. We can see what was actually run and what wasn't. So here, for example, we can see that you know data set v1 was used and not data set v2. Uh, the other feature then is we can actually zoom in to uh, various parts of uh, this particular graph and kind of view more details. So just by hitting the view, we can then uh, uh, get a have a look at the output. So in this case, it was a pandas data frame. So we have some uh, basic summary stats here. Uh, if there were any errors, they would uh, show up here. And then otherwise, we also uh, have a snapshot of the code. Uh, uh, for most things, we can actually also uh, go upstream and downstream of this node by using uh, upstream and downstream here. Uh, so we can kind of see uh, walk through through the graph. Uh, walk through and see the code uh, up until the source data set. Now, uh, we, uh, now since this has been, we're in the kind of the, the, the runs history view here, uh, this is kind of uh, uh, where we uh, landed into. If we want to kind of see uh, more about the, uh, the project itself, we can uh, have a look at the versions, right? So um, uh, we can then also see all the transforms and artifacts that were cataloged uh, under catalog. Uh, so you can search for things here. So uh, you know, pedal uh, features, for example. Uh, when things run, we also see the uh, execution information, or at least the last few runs for it. So we can see that uh, pedal length uh, centimeters existed in version 63, uh, and we can see it in, in, in run uh, 105. And so this would, takes us to that view. Um, if we uh, uh, dig in more here, the other feature that we kind of see uh, is we can also click on the version that will take us uh, to that particular uh, uh, node or in this case uh, feature and we can kind of easily see what's upstream and downstream and what this uh, leads into. So if you want to quickly understand uh, the impact of changing something or particularly uh, what artifacts, you can kind of see um, that pretty easily just by what's color coded in the graph. So one of the things that we can see is that there's a few um, uh, icons here, and they basically indicate uh, data sets that have been uh, uh, output. Um, if we want to know more, we can go back to the catalog, right, and, and type in here, we see data set of V1, and we can kind of see the similar information. Now, uh, for these artifacts, uh, if you dig into more of the execution information, we'll actually uh, uh, pull some extra metadata for it. So we can actually kind of see here that uh, this table, for example, uh, its data set uh, had the following column names uh, and uh, we saved it as a data set V1. Uh, so let's go uh, now see what happens when we you know, modify the code and say uh, inject an error. How does uh, Hamilton help us here? Well, 
So let's put in a uh, error in uh, value error in this in, in, in a random function here. Uh, I can't spell error demo error. Now, uh, when we go back to run uh, this code, uh, we should see now an error crop up. Oh, uh, yep. There was a, uh, we can see there's a demo error now. Uh, we can kind of scroll up and see that our execution uh, URL, uh, we can just go that pretty quickly. Uh, this takes us and uh, without us say, you know, this was running in, in someone else's code, we can easily kind of visualize and pinpoint uh, where exactly, uh, which function it was. Uh, and then if we uh, see more, we see here uh, the stack trace. Now, uh, say you're new, you're on call, and y you didn't know that someone made this code error or someone else did it, how could you easily debug that? Well, uh, we can actually take uh, the previous run, right, um, and compare it. And so uh, if we do that here, uh, we can kind of see uh, that we can actually scroll down and uh, see the difference. Now, uh, on, the co on the code view, we can kind of see here that, yeah, there's a difference between uh, the two runs. And in this case, the error uh, most likely was caused uh, uh, by code. And if it wasn't code, uh, it would be data. Uh, so I am just to keep this demo short, just going to show you uh, that uh, if it wasn't code, one of the things that we could do is walk through all the upstream kind of uh, executions of this and kind of compare the inputs and outputs. And so uh, we can actually compare you know, more runs uh, if we wanted to up here. Uh, but after the output of each function, uh, if there is a t data type that we support, we can try to ca capture some information about it. And so then in this run compare view, we can then you know, walk through things to kind of really decide uh, and see, you know, was there an issue with the data if, if code uh, wasn't the problem? That's all I wanted to share. Thanks for listening.